today we'll be talking about uh, the wiki philosophy and why wikis are so uh, useful. So a bit brief intro introduction about myself. Uh, I'm a doctor by training and I'm involved in uh, world-class medical research at my alma mater, which is the major university of health and allied sciences based in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, which is in East Africa. And today we'll be I've chosen this topic about wiki philosophy because uh, it's something that uh, I personally find useful in my day-to-day -day, uh, uh, dealings as a as a as a person who does a lot of uh, deals with a lot of knowledge and research in the medical uh, field. Uh, I keep a, a small week a personal wiki for myself. I've been doing it since 2016, and I use a small uh, app called Tidly Wiki, more on that later. So I think um, it's the reason why uh, I've chosen this topic today is that it's important for us to think about how to think, basically, it's called metacognition, how to think, because it's, uh, it, it's what allows us to think uh, better with time. Uh, for, for example, uh, how might we achieve better creativity through simplicity by maximizing work not done? That's something for you to keep in your mind, uh, brain teaser, while we go through this presentation. So what exactly is the wiki philosophy? The wiki way is best uh, described as the ability to make bad edits uh, easy to correct rather than hard to make and that's the key thing about wiki is about it it's about ed editability the easier you make uh, you make it for users strangers around the internet to correct bad edits you have yourself a wiki and it's a it's a pretty it's a simple concept on its own but there is more to it than that and that is uh, the good expression of wiki philosophy in practice is that it should support the ability to quickly uh, create uh, support the create to support the creation of uh, ideas quickly and to uh, support uh, generativity in uh, furthering creativity now this uh, term might not make sense to you as of now but we'll explore it uh, better by looking at the history of wikis in general so most of you know who created the first wiki is a wonderful man called Ward Cunningham and here he is giving a Wikimania talk in two, back in 2005. And the, the original purpose of wikis was to do something called, uh, was to help document something called pattern languages, or sometimes call, uh, it's called, referred to as design patterns. And wh what design patterns are, is are that they are reusable forms of a solution to a common design problems. So you could you could refer to wikis as a problem solution playbook, and that was the original purpose of wiki, as um, explained by Ward Cunningham in a paper published with Michael Meffer here back in 2014. And uh, his original wiki, which was the Wiki Wiki Web um, screenshot over here for you to see, this was actually the first wiki and the first. Uh, thing it was used for was to document uh, uh, different approaches to solving uh, different problems in software engineering and software development. And uh, this was its original purpose back in 1995. And this web website is still there for your information. It's still a pretty interesting place to go through for interesting reads about um, a lot of the ideas that uh, are being used today to build software so there are a couple of concepts that are that the wiki philosophy encourages which includes uh, embracing rapid changes generativity now generativity is about uh, creating new complex patterns from simple deterministic rule sets the simplest uh, example i could give you is um, 
uh, DNA. It's just a couple of bases, AGTP, that gives rise to all the complexity in biology that we know of and that support us. And uh, another example is the alphabet. Uh, the simple rule set of alphabets allows us to create uh, complicated and uh, fascinating languages that we see today, um, like the different language, uh, wiki, language wikis that we have today. And it also allows for falsification and refinement so that uh, things do not lead to obsolescence, things do not freeze to death and become obsolete. And um, good design emerging from bottom up uh, teams and exploration from the bottom up and learning and adapting accordingly because you are able to, uh, to, to rapidly uh, iterate on whatever you're creating. So this is, this actually, if some of you are into software development, this might actually sound familiar because these are the same principles that led to the creation of the Agile Manifesto in software development and subsequently the rise of Agile development in software engineering. So all this came from the first wikis in general. And uh, this uh, leads us to an interesting question. Is Wikipedia the biggest Agile project ever? Or the, or the, or the World Wide Web for that matter, because it does uh, use the same similar principles, building complexity from simple rule sets. And in a way, in fact, they are all works of generativity. They encourage bottom-up rapid creativity. No committee could build uh, Wikipedia or uh, the web on its own. It's only if there is, if a committee must uh, exist, it's only to create these absolutely simple rule sets to support the creation of uh, more complicated uh, systems by, by end users. And this is what we mean by the question we posed at the beginning of this presentation, creativity through simplicity, i.e. maximizing work not done. You don't need to do all the work, you just need to, to, to um, create a simplified rule set model that can support the creation of bigger stuff. So what's next for the, this is the wiki philosophy in the past and present. But what about the future? What's coming next? Uh, currently, we're seeing a new wave of uh, wiki-like personal knowledge management software that's becoming more and more popular online and offline. And uh, these are some of the examples that exist today. You may have heard of Notion.so. It's a popular personal knowledge management app. And there's also ROM research, which has re, re led to the rediscovery of bidirectional links and, and uh, knowledge graphs, also very popular. And you also have many open source alternatives, one of which being uh, something called TiddlyWiki. It's a very popular tool, which I use. And in fact, uh, this, is, this entire presentation is being hosted inside of a TiddlyWiki. And I'll show you how it works in a moment. But the, these last uh, innovations over here are helping the, the fuel the emergence of something uh, of something more distributed and generated versus centralized and prescriptive workspaces. Meaning that currently the the state of most wikis is that they're centralized, but now we're seeing an emergence of distributed or decentralized applications. And uh, TiddlyWiki is the simplest example that I can offer to you as a case study, as we shall see later. And why are we exploring distributed wikis? It's because Wikipedia is a centralized uh, repository, for example. It is vulnerable to certain problems inherent to its design, which includes uh, not uh, least censorship. It is actually being censored or currently being blocked in 15 different countries. Not all of them are, are the stereotypical um, uh, authoritarian countries, some of them are even uh, Western democratic countries. So it doesn't really matter. You can be blocked by anyone if, you're, if you become inconvenient uh, for, for whatever reason, legally or illegally or whatever. You're still vulnerable to censorship when you're centralized. Distributed wikis can help um, host uh, content in a more distributed fashion and help create a robust or even anti-fragile. Anti-fragile is a term that's used to describe uh, 
systems that gain from disorder or from stress rather than lose to disorder. Um, if I could give an example, a quick example, your muscle benefits from stress, as a good amount of stress to keep itself uh, in tone and in shape uh, rather than complete relaxation or complete lack of stress, which would actually lead to muscle atrophy. So consider organizations using Wikipedia articles as seeds for more specialized content. You see the like kind of a feder federation, federal distrib redistribution of content from Wikipedia in order to create uh, um, decentralized or distributed uh, wikis that are more specialized to a certain discipline. And you, you, you consequently can have an organic ecosystem of wikis as a result. So Tiddle Wiki is a case study. Tiddle Wiki is, is, is a very unique uh, wiki tool, um, in not, not because it, it supports nonlinear thought, that is, your information isn't, in, uh, isn't um, organized in a hierarchical fashion, but more of nonlinear, kind of like how our brain works. Um, and it, it's also decentralized. It's not hosted on, at, in one domain. You can download it and store it and move it around like a sim simple document. Uh, the only difference is that it's, it's an HTML document. It's self-contained. It's truly serverless. And I'm when I say when I say serverless in the constant con context of TiddlyWiki, it truly is serverless. There is no backend to speak of, which makes it extremely private and extremely robust to um, uh, compared to most tools out there. And there's a limited rule sets inside, which includes wiki text, similar to what's supported on Wikipedia, macros, widgets, and um, you can host it on the web and you can host it on something called the Node.js platform, which allows for infinite possibilities in terms of what you can create from it. It's very accessible. There is little to no programming skills required. Anyone can edit for, can edit it into something of their own. Uh, so here's a, a short little demo here. Let's say I've created this simple macro here. And from this tiny macro, you can generate an entire mi uh, miniature app for supporting to-dos. So for example, I can show it to you right here. This little macro can give you this to-do app. And this can, and this, it's a pretty complete, uh, 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 mini miniature application with running inside this wiki. Um, this is a to-do list, outstanding tasks. I can dismiss it, I can check it off, I can remove it. And uh, if you look at if you look at it inside, it's built up of a simple markup that can support the creation of interesting uh, creative ideas using the wiki text markup. And it's not very complicated. Anyone can use it. Some some creatives um, in a, in the community managed to create an entire Trello clone using this uh, simple rule set. And here's a screenshot of the whole thing. It's it's really awesome, and it's just amazing what you can do, how how much you can express if you have such malleable software. Um, so, as I say, centralized wikis as they are today in mainstream uh, wikis, uh, for that matter, they pose, they pose certain challenges. And um, there also, there's also another challenge of quality. Uh, I chose this quote here. I don't know if any of you know this show, Rick and Morty, but there's a, there's a part where this, the main character, Rick Sanchez, says, tells um, another character, don't believe everything you see on Wikipedia. So the current challenge faced by Wikipedia is that there's still this, um, for, uh, sometimes for the right reasons, sometimes for the wrong reasons, there's still this atmosphere of mistrust because of how the content is generated. There is no, uh, there, there is a perceived lack of accuracy. There's a per perceived lack of authenticity. And uh, these challenges are real and they have to be dealt with by the committee and they're being dealt with in many ways, but these are challenges that are continuously being addressed. The question of trust, centralization can sometimes breed mistrust for the wrong reasons. There's always going to be someone who's mistrustful of something that, that is 
kind of beyond the control, which is kind of weird because uh, wiki, wikis in general are, uh, you can uh, influence them. And that's precisely why many people sometimes might not trust them because anyone can influence them. Though Wikipedia is very robust in its ability to root out uh, malicious ad edits. You can, uh, there's also the concept of federal wikis that is trying to solve this problem of trust. Uh, federal wikis are being developed by the original creator of Ward Cunningham. You may have heard of the Federated Wiki. He's, uh, he's uh, into that, and it's something that sh that, that uh, people should keep a close eye on. And also speci specialization wikis. You you could have uh, you do have the spawning of different wikis that uh, are able to become more robust because they're specialized. There's uh, maybe a class of experts who review them, and that makes them more uh, robust in the eyes of people in those domains. And um, also uh, the, the question of quality. Quality, you, the beauty of wikis is that they can always support uh, continuous improvement in quality, unlike uh, other uh, platforms. And that's a strength and a weakness at the same time. And establishing what could help meet these challenges is establishing best practices on how to use wiki produce. There are 748 opinions on ResearchGate on how to cite Wikipedia, for example. So this is something that's still being debated in a lot, a lot of academic circle, circles on how to meet, uh, because Wikipedia is pretty useful, but how to appropriately use it is, is a place of active discussion. And we, we as the Wikipedians, we as Wikimedians, we can all play our role in contributing to the discussion and improving the ability to cite Wikipedia in whatever manner, or use it in an academic um, field, uh, environment. So Aluta Continua, these are challenges that are always being addressed as of now. And uh, this is the end of this presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. There are a couple of links here that I think you might find useful. Uh, you can support uh, TiddlyWiki uh, in, by, uh, monetarily or through volunteering. You can join the community if you love, if you love the platform. Spe special acknowledgement to these individuals for, make, for making these uh, uh, plugins that supported this presentation possible. Uh, thank you, and that's it for the presentation. <laughs>